Connect four. Stay connected. Let's come together and live in this world like a unibrow on an Indian girl, and we should dance, 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 dance. To these stereotypes. Stereotypes. We all know them. We all use them, even if we don't realise it ourselves. I'm Craig Patterson, and in this show I will be looking into how we view the world through stereotypes. All plums are stupid. Aberdonians in their questionable relationship with sheep. So originally I started to think about stereotypes after the recent mass shooting in Las Vegas, which left 58 people dead and hundreds more injured. The reaction in the media afterwards was interesting to say the least, with one newspaper even leading with a headline about the shooter's love for country music. This got me thinking, how different would the media reaction have been if the shooter was black? I started to think about this question deeper, wondering how the results of both the US election and Brexit may have been influenced by stereotyping and how stereotypes are represented in the media through film and TV. I spoke with 4th Valley College student Adil Ahmed to gather his thoughts on the topic. So Adil, first off, what's the first stereotype that comes to your mind? The first one, well, I believe this day and age, the most common ones are the racial ones, or for me, it's racial. Um, you know that you see a slightly dark-skinned man with a beard, and you know you start to get suspicious around him. Yeah, that's especially like shown at airports and that. If you go on holiday, and you do see it quite a bit, people giving funny looks to people that they're sitting next to on the plane because of how they look. Uh, and obviously the stuff in the media about all of that, uh, how it's interpreted, which is really unfair. That's it. It's it's all down to the media, you know. That's all they show, pretty much. Um, and like you said, stereotypes. Stereotypes is around something that commonly happens, uh, you know. And that's because that's basically all that the media show. That's the idea that's going to be created in the viewer's mind. So that you know, that's what they're just going to be looking out for when they're out and about yeah so do you ever feel that you're personally stereotyped uh, if it be at work or out on the street or anything like that me personally like do am i the subject of stereotyping or do i stereotype myself are you the subject do you am i think? the subject well i'd like to believe i'm not yeah i doubt i doubt that i am you know because i do get people giving me you know their views like some people say I look Spanish, or some people say I look such and like such and such. So, I guess you know I take I, judging from that, I take a wide variety of boxes. So I like to think mm. I don't really get stereotyped. So why do you think it is that it's such a common thing, especially when it comes to race or religion, for people to be stereotyped? Do you think it's down to the media? Do you think it's down to people's house life, how they've grown up, how they've been brought up? You're what right. You there, there is many factors. Yeah, uh, certainly the media. You know. Um, because television is a big part of our life, I like to think so. Me- the media is always on in the background, you know. Or if you're walking past a shop, you see the, you know, the headings of the newspapers. So I like to think that that is a a major influence, and also, almost certainly, yeah. Um, like you said, how you get brought up at home, um, you know, the way your parents raise you, their ideologies do get put rub off on you as well. So I like to think that is another factor, yeah. That was Adil Ahmed sharing his thoughts on the subject, and we did cover some very interesting points there. We'll come back to him later in the show. I had been thinking a lot about stereotyping in film and TV, and how that might have influenced me personally growing up. I realised that really, aside from Braveheart, with terrible stereotypical accents... I didn't like him anyway. He wasn't right in the head. Scott's got a pretty bad image in the media. Grimms Keeper Willie in The Simpsons. Bonjour, you cheese eating surrender monkeys! And the train spotting films are probably the two most well known representations of Scottish people living elsewhere in the world, excluding Braveheart. Bagpipes are also commonly made fun of and heavily associated with Scotland. Scrooge McDuck is Scottish and is shown as a greedy, angry man, <laughs> or duck. Or even take Doctor Who, when David Tennant took over. For the role, the lead role, he wasn't allowed to use his Scottish accent and he was universally loved in the role. 
Peter Capaldi, however, did get to keep his accent and they kind of wrote his character of the Doctor with some stereotypical Scottish traits and that really divided the fan base on him. This is probably why Scots are viewed more negatively with stereotypes. So how do we fix this? Really the answer is quite simple. Take Buffy the Vampire Slayer as an example. The creator of the show, Josh Ween, felt that blonde girls need to have a better representation from the common stereotypes around them and came up with the idea for the character of Buffy, which became one of the most iconic characters of all time. Whenever Giles sends me on a mission, he always says, please, and afterwards I get a cookie. A very popular, positive representation of a group of people can completely change opinions and associations made from them. On the flip side, this is how I feel Trump exploited people's feelings towards disabled people, foreigners, gay people, women, people of different races, all the way to the White House. And how the Brexit campaign was won off the back of campaigns from UKIP and the BNP based on what were essentially lies and stereotypes that has now changed the world we live in. If it was possible, do you think it is possible for people to stop using stereotypes in the future? I think it could be, yeah. Um, like, bringing my arms back to the news, you know, um, whenever they give us a headline, you know, whether it's a terrorism act or theft or murder, they always tend to use, like, you know, the same, uh, f- you know, features or they always, you know, t- again, t- 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 the same boxes mm. and they always put a certain stereotype in that... Uh, category if you like so i guess you know if they if they stop that or if society itself you know um if we had to look at our own ideas about people i think that we could easily stop stereotyping yeah when people rely on surface appearances and false racial stereotypes rather than in-depth knowledge of others at the level of the heart mind and spirit Their ability to assess and understand people accurately is compromised. That is a quote from James A. Forbes, who became the first African-American minister to lead a multicultural congregation in Manhattan, and I think it sums up stereotyping quite well. Stereotypes have a massive influence on how we view the world, and it is something we need to try and look past. I hope this show has made you think about how you yourself view others, and has given you something to think about. I'm Craig Patterson, and thanks for listening. Connect 4. Stay connected.